It is exceedingly frustrating when uh, you see the fact that the Afghans, even with all the flaws, even with all the problems of current leadership, preparing to go to the polls, the Taliban taking this action, which they basically announce, and sadly they make good on. Part of the confusion in the Middle East, uh, to sort all this out, we are so pleased to, uh, to take a look at a brand new book, The Lost Spring. It's written by world-renowned expert on terrorism in the Middle East, Walid Faris. And Professor Ferris takes the Obama administration to task for what he views as its abandonment of democratic forces in the region, beginning with the pullout from Afghanistan before the Taliban were roundly defeated and continuing with an apologist bureaucracy and partnering with the Islamist lobbies. He also predicts a major breakdown of U.S. and Western policies in the Mideast headed our way unless a sea change is made in policy in Washington from Newsmax TV, New York, Waleed Ferris joins us right now. Uh, Professor Ferris, The Lost Spring, uh, the book, you say in that book that the United States grossly mishandled the Arab Spring. How did American policymakers come to mishandle the Arab Spring? Well, first of all, before the Arab Spring, uh, all the waves that indicated that an Arab Spring is about to happen, we mishandle them. Uh, I remind our viewers that in June of 2009, at a time where 1.5 to 2 million Iranians, 60 percent of whom were under the age of 20, a third of those girls and women were demonstrating in Tehran against the Ayatollah regimes. Uh, the administration, unfortunately, and the president made a statement whereby the regime in Iran understood that the, we would not stand by the Iranian people. We lost huge opportunity to bring down, to change that regime. And imagine that would have basically created a win for half of the war on terror. We did not. Then when the Arab Spring began, the first wave was remarkable. Youth, uh, women, minorities in Egypt and Tunisia and Syria. That was the first little wave. But instead of giving visibility to the seculars and reformers, we began partnering with the Islamists, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, the Nahda in uh, Tunisia, and Salafi militias in Libya, one of which attacked us on September of 2012. So all of these grave mistakes have led to uh, cataclysmic changes in the Middle East, and we would need now to, as you said in the introduction, reform our policy to go back and catch up. Now, Professor Ferris, we, we take a look back, and, and you specifically talk about the silence from our president and the Obama administration in the wake of an attempt to rekindle democracy or at least dissent in Tehran. But there was a very different picture. Uh, you will recall President Obama, one of his first trips abroad was to Cairo, and it, it seemed, uh, at least in the, through the lens of the world press, that in those days there was such promise. What happened to change Mr. Obama from an agent of change and light, if you will, to someone who was so reticent and picking, picking the, uh, backing basically the wrong folks in this lost spring? Well, there is the form and there is the substance. Most media, uh, because of how Middle Eastern studies operate in this country, focused on the form. The pr American president is addressing a audience in Egypt. But the substance was different. The substance was addressed to the Muslim Brotherhood at the time, according to many observers and monitors, even one of the writers or those who advised uh, for that speech, meaning, yes, the administration was saying we need to change, but the forces of change were not the democratic ones. We were looking at partnering with the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, their delegations were in Washington. They were paraded uh, you know, in many cities in, in, in the West. We have funded their projects. We have trained their cadre. And we have ignored completely uh, the real forces of change, of democracy, those who actually did the Arab Spring, and those who again came back on the streets of Cairo on June 30th, 2013. 33 million Egyptians rose, not just against Mubarak, but again against Morsi. And this is telling us that civil societies in the region do want what we want, but our policy is not connecting with them. It's connecting, in this case, with the Brotherhood in Northern Africa, and as we said earlier, there is a hope in Washington, at least the political Washington, that the Ayatollahs are going to reform. 
So we're cutting deals with them, and we are unfreezing money and sending billions of dollars to them. These are mistakes that need to be addressed and changed. Professor Ferris, I wonder if you could make some sense of what's going on in Egypt right now with these uh, death penalties that have been recently announced. Uh, we saw some video here in this segment of uh, people supporting Mohamed Morsi. That's obviously file video. Can you just explain for us what those death penalties really mean and what they say about the current uh, attitudes in the Middle East, specifically in Egypt, towards the United States right now? Well, first of all, the Muslim Brotherhood regime of uh, Mr. Morsi was transforming Egypt from an ally to the United States, from a guarantor of the peace with Israel, to an Islamist state, something very close to the Taliban with some modern institutions. Civil society in Egypt rose. That's the biggest event of the day, of the year, of the decade, I would say. 33 million people uh, in June, and again another time in July, demonstrated. This is the biggest demonstration in the history of the world, we have not seen that. It means that silent majority in the Arab world in general, in Egypt in particular, wants to move forward after Mubarak into a de democratic path. But the Morsi regime has armed a militia, and that militia, even after the fall of his regime, is still fighting, fighting the army, fighting the police, fighting the judges, and also trying to destabilize the country. Now, many of these MBs have been arrested by the government of Egypt, and these trials, basically, are going to be long trials. Definitely, these uh, sentences of death sentences will be, uh, you know, dealt with at the appeal level. Uh, this is just the process of an interim government trying to struggle to get to the other side of stability. Now, there will be elections in Egypt for a president, for a parliament, and I would say the parliamentary e e elections would be more important because it's going to create, it's going to give Egypt an opportunity to have a Congress-like institution where they could do debate, open debate. At least that's the path we are seeing for now. So in terms of the sea change, and you mentioned election reform and specifically the parliamentary elections in Egypt, but throughout the region, for a sea change in America, uh, Professor Ferris, very quickly, a checklist of what needs to be done if we're going to see change for the better. We need to do a lot of things. A change of direction in Washington has to take place first, as we all know. Second, on the ground, in Syria, we need to find the right partner on the ground. Uh, Assad is linked to Iran. Part of the opposition is Al-Qaeda and the jihadists. We need to find that third party, and it exists. Those demonstrations who began the opposition in Syria, where are they? Who's in charge of them? We need to connect with them. There are minorities in Syria we need to work with. In Iran, we need to you know, send the money actually to the Iranian opposition. We need to organize them. They are very strong. The youngest in Iran are ready to move. In Egypt, in Libya, and Tunisia, we need to side with civil society, not with the Islamists and not with the authoritarian regime. We'll have to leave it there. Professor Walid Ferris, we thank you for your time and your insights and your new book, The Lost Spring. Thanks so much. Uh, so a lot of thank problems you. and a lot of things that need attention in the Middle East right now. They certainly do, and we need your comments on the subject. If you'd like to weigh in on it, we'd love to hear from you. You can tweet us 